Good evening everyone, Edward here, and I'm going to be sharing some tips for the newcomers to Animal Crossing New Horizons. These tips will be focused more for the day one and day two players, and who knows, maybe some of these will surprise the more age players as well. Let's get started. Tip number one, as you probably already know, you have to craft in this game. And more importantly, you have to craft your Animal Crossing essential tools, such as your bug net, your fishing pole, your shovel, etc. For most of those items, they require tree branches. And where do we find these tree branches? Why in trees, of course. Now bear with me on this one. Of course, we all know that shaking a tree will probably net you a tree branch. But did you know that you could stay at the same tree and keep shaking that one? This will save time for you jumping between trees and just shaking the one time like we were accustomed to in the past Animal Crossing titles. Let's take a look. Let's check out this one. Alrighty, we got one, we got two, and as you can see, the more we shake, the more branches will fall. So we got three out of this one. That's just one tree. We got one. We got two. We got three. Look at that. So between two branches, two trees, we were able to get six branches. Alrighty. And that's tip number one. I'll see you in the next one. Alrighty y'all, time for tip number two. Now that we've gathered some branches, let's take a look at crafting some tools. So, whenever we're crafting something, take note on how long the animation is until your item is crafted. Let's see, I am in desperate need of a bug net. Let's craft it. Alrighty. So did you take note on about how long that took? It's nothing crazy, but this is just something that I found. Let's make another bug net. Now watch what happens as I rapidly press A. Look at that. I found that if you rapidly press the A button, it will speed up that animation. This will get you back to the fun faster. Now let's check out tip number three. My third tip for you is to craft and place a DIY workbench outside as soon as you can. With the durability of the flimsy items in the beginning of the game being very low, they are bound to break on you frequently. Now, imagine that you are chasing after that insect or fish that's been eluding you all day and you can't catch it because your tool just broke. Well, if you remember, the only DIY workbench at the start of the game is in Tom Nook's tent. If you go inside to craft your lost item, you will more than likely despawn that critter that you've been chasing after. Let's see. So I have a, a pretty sizable fish right here. Now just imagine that your fishing pole just broke and you can't catch it. Well. Let's show you an example. If we go inside Tom Nick's tent, and let's say we went inside and we craft a fishing pole. All right, we craft it over here. Let's go outside. And now we're ready to catch that fish. If we go to the same spot, you'll notice it's not here anymore. So going in the tent, despawn that fish. Now let's say that you were after this butterfly, this tiger butterfly here. So, and let's say, oh no, my net just broke. Well, we know that if we go in here, it'll despawn. What we'll do We'll go right here, our outside workbench, we'll craft something, and I should have just enough branches. 
we'll make a net. And then with tip two, we will rapidly press the A button to make it faster. Let's go ahead and equip our net. Now where did you go? Oh, and there it is. You know the butterflies, they always travel fast. And there you go. That is tip number three. Let's go on to the next. Okay, tip number four brings us into my humble abode. Let's turn on the lights. Yes, it is very humble. <laughs> Alrighty. So let's take a look at a new feature in this game. Right here in my house storage, I have sea bass. Let's put that in my pockets. Now we know that we can place items normally in our house with the sea creatures and the bugs. But did you know we can place them on top of each other now? This will save a lot of room. There you go. Look at that. So now I have our sea bass and my tiger butterfly and my emperor butterfly. Isn't that neat? Alrighty. We'll see you in the next. Alrighty. So, let's put that away. And tip number five brings us to our inventory. Now, whenever we're just starting, it really kind of frustrated me because I couldn't figure out how to organize my inventory. It turns out whenever you click and hold the A button, that is how you grab the item and you can move it. So since I like being a little neat with my stuff in my inventory, I like to move things around. So I like keeping my tools up top and then some of my essentials, like branches and stones, I can fuse that together. I can have all that here. So that's a quick tip for tip number five. Alrighty, this leads us to our last tip, how to catch a tarantula. Now it's surprisingly, it didn't take very long from the last tip to actually find one. So, at night, whenever you're walking around, you'll see this guy right here. You see him? Ooh, scary. So, it can be pretty tough to try to catch one. So here's what you wanna do. You wanna immediately ready the net. And you see him rearing up like that? You wanna wait until he puts him down, take a few steps forward, He'll rear up again, put it down, he'll do it again. You just, it's playing it patient. That's all it is. You just want to completely stop. As soon as he rears up, just stop. Just a little bit more. A little bit more. One more, one more. And there you go. You got yourself a tarantula. I caught a tarantula. This situation just got hairy. Oh. <laughs> and there you go. That's your last tip. Catching a tarantula. It can be pretty difficult, but like I said, play it patient. Whenever he rears up, stop. Stop touching the joystick. <laughs> Alrighty. These have been tips for the beginners. And if you have any other tips for other players, go ahead and leave them down in the comment section below. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.